Welcome to the Mona Beginner Crack Talks. In this tutorial, we will look at how to add colliders in Unity for a Mona space. First, we will look at the most common types of colliders. Then we will look at how to apply simple colliders. After that, we will look at how to add a mesh collider and how to optimize the mesh collider type. And then we will look at some things to consider when using colliders in a Mona space. If you don't want your users to constantly fall through the floor or be able to walk through walls, then you'll need colliders. A collider is simply a component that makes assets solid and unable to be moved through by the avatars. The simplest colliders are the box collider, capsule collider, sphere collider, and for more complex objects, you can use a mesh collider. The box, capsule, and sphere collider are simple colliders and therefore much better for performance. A mesh collider is more complicated and therefore slower in performance. However, there are ways to optimize this and we will go over that later in the tutorial. Setting up a collider is quite easy. Select the asset you would like to add the collider to, go over to the inspector and type the part of the component you want. Box, sphere, capsule, or collider is a good example. Once you have applied the component, you can modify the collider with the edit bounding volume button here. Note that to adjust the collider, you need to click on the dots in the center of the area. Otherwise it will deselect the asset. It is also possible to edit the parameters directly if need be. You can apply a collider on the asset itself or on an empty game object. You can copy and paste components by right clicking the top of the component, select copy component, and then use paste component as new wherever you want it to go. If you apply a collider to an empty game object, you can rotate it. Rotation is not possible on the component itself. Adding more than one collider component to an asset is also possible. Note that in Unity 2022, the Edit Collider button is at the top of the first collider component. You can also use the button on the bar to the top left. You can add a mesh collider in the same way as other colliders by selecting the asset and adding the mesh collider component. If you apply the mesh collider on an asset with a model, the mesh on the asset will be the collider. This is fine for simple objects, but if you have an asset with many polygons, you will want to make a simplified version of the asset so the space has less information to process. You can use the convex checkbox to do an automatic optimization with a maximum of 255 triangles. You could also make a modified version of the same asset in your asset creation tool. The modified version is purely the collision detection and will not be visible. Make sure to reduce the polygons as much as possible. Once imported into Unity, you can drag the mesh, not the asset, into the mesh slot on the component. If you expand the asset in the project folder, the mesh can be found with the little grid on it. The asset itself cannot be dragged into the mesh collider slot. Depending on the asset, you may need to modify the mesh collider's position, rotation, and scale. If this is the case, you can apply it to an empty game object for more control over the asset. If the mesh collider doesn't align with your main mesh, ensure both assets have applied the transform and that the pivot is in the same location in your 3D creation tool. You may find that deleting and reapplying the mesh collider component will also work. You may also want a different mesh as a collider, such as a ramp instead of a stairs, so moving up them will be a smoother experience. Many of the assets in Mona, such as portals, artifacts, and canvases, require colliders to function correctly. The user interacts with the asset collider, rather than the model that represents them. This collider is both what you interact with and a physical collider. The main thing to note is that if you have a physical collider that overlaps or surrounds these key colliders, they will not be able to be interacted with. If you add a thick picture frame to a canvas with a box collider, you won't be able to interact with the canvas. As you can see in this example, the first three assets work fine, but the second three assets do not. You can get around this by setting the larger physical collider assets to a new layer. Go to the top right of the inspector on the asset and select the layer pulldown and then add layer. On layer eight, add a label for your assets that can be seen through, but are physical colliders. The name is not important, just the fact that it's on layer eight. So looking at our previous example, you can see that the assets work correctly, even though the physical collider is larger than the interactable collider. With the basics done, we can move on to our time-lapse. You'll note that I have updated a couple of the assets from the previous time-lapse. The colors are aligned with the sofa and armchairs, and the windows have been adjusted to the layout. I've hidden most of the assets to make things easy to track but we'll add colliders to all the main elements that require them. Let's start with the room itself. It may be tempting to use a mesh collider with all your assets, but I do find there are benefits to creating separate assets with box colliders. Not only is this more performant, but it also allows for more control overall. Add an empty game object to apply the box colliders to. 
and then set them up to the walls, floor and ceiling. I can split the walls up into different objects, so I can just duplicate and rotate them, which is much faster. The box collider approach allows me to modify the colliders within Unity without having to jump to Blender if an update is needed. If I was going to use a mesh collider, I would actually create a simplified asset so that the avatar can't jump out the window, but also be that little bit more performant. In this case, it's just a cube, with the normals facing inwards, as the normal direction is what is used in the collider, and apply that to the mesh collider component. Make sure that your optimized mesh collider and the original mesh have the same settings, such as applying transforms and the pivot location, otherwise they will not line up in Unity. Do note once again that the asset itself does not get dragged onto the mesh collider component, but the mesh itself. This is a subcategory of the asset. Moving on to the furniture, we have the same options. In the case of the ottoman, I can quickly add a box collider. Note that the size of the collider will usually align to the size of the object if it's on the asset itself, which is great for single collider assets. If I plan to use several colliders, I find it easier to navigate the colliders by adding an empty game object, so the only components you see are the colliders. You can use a mesh collider on its own, use simple colliders to create the base shape, or create an optimized version of the asset to use on the mesh collider. Simple colliders will always be more performant, but there are certain situations where you might want to use a mesh collider. As always, it comes down to time, quality, and performance. With the base assets done, let's get into adding colliders for all the other assets at 10 times speed. Note how with some assets I'll use a single box collider, and others I'll add an empty game object with several box colliders. As most of these assets are relatively simple shapes, I don't feel the need to make a custom mesh collider asset to set up as a mesh collider. Pay attention to the spawn point. If it goes red, that means that a collider is overlapping, or you don't have a collider to land on. So make sure that it is blue, so your space works correctly. I plan to have six dining chairs around the dining table, but in the last video I only added one. I did this as I knew I would need to add the colliders. So now that I have finished this asset, I could easily add more of them. Another fantastic tool to save time with assets like this is Prefabs. This allows you to make duplicates of an asset, but when you change one, you change them all. I won't be showing this process in the beginner crash course, but you can find a link to that method in the links below. Note that some assets, like the light, don't have a collider at all. It is best to only add colliders to things that will use them. In the case of the shelves above the desk, I only added one, as an avatar will not be able to fit between two shelves. It's always a good habit to get into optimizing where you can. In some cases, it will save you time, but in most cases, it will allow your space to run that little bit faster. In this tutorial, you have looked at adding colliders to prevent users from moving through the space's assets. With that all done, we can start looking at lighting to make our space look that little bit better. Thanks for watching, and happy building!